You're listening to Shoe In, covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, from sneakers to heels, loafers to slippers, and every type of shoe in between. Brought to you by the FDRA, the Footwear Industries Association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion. Helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. And now your footwear insiders, Matt Priest and Andy Holt. And we're back. We're back, baby. All right. Here we go. Shoe and show. Let's do it. <laughs> we got so many people tuned in today, I don't even know. Our numbers keep growing and growing. I get yep. more and more excited. 2019 is going to be a great year. One of the biggest challenges, though, to our year, yeah. supply chains. So true. I mean, it's both in terms of getting shoes into the U.S., Yep. but also getting those shoes to warehouses. Yep. And then now with e-commerce growing, you know, nearly you know 20% of all sales are e-commerce. It's getting those shoes to those front doors <clears throat> and the returns back. That's right. And how you manage all that. It's not, it's not an easy game anymore. No, it's not an easy game at it all. It used to be simple. But now I'm- it's complex. We went from like... Chess. We went from checkers to chess. Man, that is complex. That's a tough move. What's the little? You cast- got my queen. What's the little quack castle thing do? Does that go one way or the other? The and rook. The, and then the uh, thing, pointy hat thing rook and throw th- something. Uh, I don't know. Pointy that's hat. too. That's too fast for me. <laughs> Hence, I don't do supply chains. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I landed in DC. That's right, man. <laughs> that's right. Well. Joining us today, before we get to our guests, is one Thomas Crockett, who's back from paternity leave. Congratulations yeah, to Thomas, Thomas. Thank you. his family. Um, another daughter, um, which is all that the FDRA team produces. We have six girls amongst us now, <laughs> and uh, and I'm sure we will go from there. Jasmine is here for her hey world-famous fashion footwear and focus segment, which yes. we'll get to later. Mm-hmm. But first, we, you know, one of the things that we have a lot of guests on the show and sometimes I don't know them very well or it's a, some uppity up and we reach out and somehow they say, up. they say, hey, I'll join the show. And then sometimes like a real dear friend comes on who I've, who I've sat at fire pits with and discuss life and to talk mm. sports and have traveled to California with and have just hung out and had a good time, really connected. And that's one Kevin Bruning, who's import compliance manager at Clark's. Kevin, welcome to the Shoe and Show. We this is a long time coming. We are glad you are here. Glad to be here, man. Thanks for having me. I'm really looking forward to being on the Shoe and Show. Tell us your shoe story, Kevin, as we get started. Kind of what? How did you get to Clark's? What do you do at Clark's? And then we'll go from there. All right, I've been in the uh, import compliance business now for about 15 years. I started out at a uh, a small logistics company. Uh, I don't want to mention the names. And from there, I actually studied to get my broker's license. Uh, I got my broker's license in, I'd say, 2001, no, 2002 it was, and then got involved into the trade side of the business. Started off at a high-tech company, was there for about five years. I went to medical devices because that's the common trend, right? Oh, yeah. And um, from, (laughs) from there, ended up working for a footwear company in the Northeast for about five years. So I mentored under a, a gentleman, an older gentleman there. He was an sh- old shoe dog. He's with one of the older uh, footwear companies that is no longer in existence. And he, I call him my Obi-Wan Kenobi because he basically taught me everything there was to know about footwear and footwear classification. So he told me about uppers, outsoles, flocking, textile outsoles. So he gave me a great knowledge set of, of footwear classification. And from there, I came to Clark. So I've been to, at Clark for about eight years now. My primary role is trade compliance, so I'm responsible for the import activity um, on the custom side, uh, classification. I also manage trade compliance for Canada, so I'm involved in classification in Canada. I work closely with our, our design teams here to ensure that we, we design shoes that are duty friendly. We don't, you know, we recommend duty changes to footwear, but we don't, you know, sway them in any way by, by tell them to change the shoe because they have to. So they take the recommendation. They may run with it. They may not. So that's basically my role here in managing. Uh, we operate a foreign trade zone as well. That's a lot. That is Which, a lot. Yeah, Man. Yeah. So you get four salaries? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Congratulations. So we're small, no, we're a global company. Um, you know, we're a worldwide company. We've been established since 1825. Um, I have a small group of one, so it's I'm an individual contributor within the organization who manages trade compliance for a forward company that imports roughly about 20 million shoes per year. 
and uh, our duty expenditure uh, last year was about thirty-two million dollars. Wow! Wow! Thirty-two million. That's crazy. I knew Kevin was a big wig when I walked into Clark's, and up on the right hand side, there's a video, a TV screen, and there was a remi- reminder for folks to take the security, you know, course or audit or whatever for their CTP audit, and and there's an avatar of Kevin. Yeah, they talking, animated. They Kevin. animated Kevin. <laughs> No. Yeah, we man- I manage the CT Bad program as well, and all the customs um, program. If anyone was not familiar with it, it's the Custom Trade Partnership Against Terrorism. It was developed after 9/11, so it's a supply chain security program that was uh, put into place. A bunch of importers got together, they powwowed, they worked with CBP to get a, the um, security criteria in place. So we do annual training, and that was a video that we put together. And actually, we showed that video at the uh, FDDC one year. We did. We did. No, that's Avatar Kevin. It's no Pixar, but it's pretty it's pretty <laughs> cool <laughs> animation. So. The funny story about that is there, uh, there's a shirt I'm wearing in the Avatar. I actually own that shirt. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, the likeness is uncanny. <laughs> Kevin. Oh, man. So, Kevin, you know, day to day, what's kind of – is your, do you have a typical day, or is it just kind of ongoing crises? A typical day, as I know, I, on a weekly, on, we'll go to a weekly basis, basically. Uh, Monday, I'll just go from day to day. Monday, what we do is we file our uh, weekly entry through the foreign trade zone. So I work with our FDZ administrator, who our foreign trade zone is our DC. It's located in Hanover, Pennsylvania. And our next door neighbor, just fun fact, is um, Utz Chips. So if you ever come down. Great tour, man. Walk through and see how they make chips. It's awesome. <laughs> Yes. And they have a and they have an outlet store. They excuse me, they have an outlet store there as well. Half um, off old chips. That's what you can get. Yeah, it's that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> the old chips or weak old chips, whatever it is. Right. <laughs> so we're <laughs> so I work with him on that and then um we just we audit that. Um we just do a, a random audit of the lines on the entry. Um in the meantime work with our our design teams as well as we're in process right now of developing a Sprig uh, 2020 line. So working with them currently, um, so that usually takes place usually Tuesday or Wednesday, um, as well as working with our supply chain teams. We're working on s- several projects right now. Working, we're looking at for sale, expanding our first sale program. Also working on another project on the CPTPP with Canada. Yeah. Um, now trying to run some goods. To, we're working on a ruling currently right now um, with CBSA to get our, our goods um, through our foreign trade zone, see if they would qualify under the CPTPP through the through the uh, foreign trade zone. There is a, a line item on the, in the CPTPP agreement that you can transship as long as it's under customs custody. So we're keeping our fingers crossed the foreign trade zone. Um, my mind is huh. customs custody, but we will see. So, Kevin, with, uh, you know, you talked about the designers. What are, um, is that, do you run into challenges? I know there are 436 different ways to classify a shoe. And, you know, for those that, that maybe aren't familiar with that, I mean, what's what's kind of the, what's the difficulty there as you're trying to, to explain to designers how the, the complex tariff code works? I mean, do you ever run into some, some um, challenges there? Yeah, we're a brown shoe company, basically, but we do have a spring spring line that gets challenging. We do a lot of sandals. We do a lot of uh, uh, flip-flops um, in the women's line. We also do some men's shoe, some, as we all are aware, in the classification world, the athlete, athleisure is big. But some of the challenges we do run into is in the women's line when it comes to um, sandals, specifically a textile upper sandal. Textile upper sandals, uh, open to open heel, currently have a 37.5% duty rate, but what we recommend to the design teams is to apply a flocking or a textile outsole to that shoe, depending on the upper material of the textile, either it's a synthetic textile, a man-made, or a cotton, we can go from a, what would be 37.5% to 12.5% for synthetic, you know, polyester to 7.5% if it was a cotton up on. So that's what, uh, what I primarily do with them. Also, if we're Designing a shoe and they're doing mixed materials. They may use three materials of uh, different types of materials to make sure that if they have a shoe that's half, maybe half PU and maybe a little bit less leather, we recommend that they add more leather to that shoe to get to a lower duty rate. Um, if it's majority PU and it's the you know, athletic shoe, it could be 20%, but if they add additional leather, it could go down to 10 for women's and 8.5 for men's. 
It's complicated it's stuff, man. And that's what it is. Um, you, the, way, <laughs> the way you walk through it is just such a great illustration about how complex and how important it is that guys like Kevin are engaged with the designer group early on. And we preach that constantly. And I think, I think you know it and guys like Eddie Foster know it and others, but the designers don't always know it. And so we had a design summit last year where we really talked to the designers about, Hey, get to know the compliance guy, the customs person in your office so that you can have these conversations up front because it can make a difference on something that's commercially viable and something that's not. No, we don't want to sway the designer in any way. We, you know, they have um, a design in mind. Uh, we want to just work with them, you know, just make recommendations. They may have a vision, you know, and we want to ruin their vision. They, we want them to be creative. We want them to be, you know, design the shoe they, they want to make and that, that will sell. Eventually, that's the, that's the business, right? Sell those shoes, sell as many as you can. So that's what we're out for. But if there's a way to, you know, increase that margin by, you know, tweaking it a little bit, then, then I recommend that. But if they have something that they love, they say, Kevin, this is it. This is the mecca of the shoe. I need to have this shoe. I said, well, this is your duty rate. I know, I know if you Kevin know Buzzkill Bruni. That's what they call him. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin the Blinder. Oh, you have a view yeah, Kevin do the you? Blinder, right? I'm going to take my pencil and stab your eyes out. There you go. Yeah, thank you. I, I told you, to, I told wide, you to add baby. leather. I told you to add leather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she should have added leather to that shoe. I would have. What a, what a soul born. <laughs> now he's taking away your security pass. Can he get into the building? <laughs> this is this is real now you power. Have to sit through my video. You have to sit through Avatar <laughs> Kevin for an hour. This is real power. <laughs> let's talk about shipping. Let's talk. Let's talk about supply like chains. Clockwork Orange. I, I open up their eyes like Clockwork Orange, and um, they have to watch the video for hours upon hours. And we just play duty, 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 duty. <laughs> Re-education. No, we don't do that. We don't do that. It's, 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 Scratch that. <laughs> I've seen your tiny little conference rooms. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I know the deal. Your wall of TVs. Actually, I yeah. have to say your headquarters are beautiful. They are and, beautiful. Uh, we yeah, held... it's a break bill. We moved here uh, two years ago. We're on um, Route 95. If anyone's familiar with the Northeast Corridor, Route 95. We're right on Route 95. We have a great building. It's uh, right on the interstate. It's wicked awesome. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thousands and thousands of cars drive by our building every day, and they see the Clark's land, so it's great. Now, yeah. one of my one of my favorite stories when you were giving your presentation on like kind of office security was the guy in the fedora who thought he could walk into the headquarters and buy a pair of shoes somewhere, right? Like, oh yes, 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 yes. That's a, <laughs> we get that all the time. We have people coming in, uh, they try to re return a pair of shoes, or <laughs> we don't have a store here. <laughs> store here so. Receptionist, she has some stories, but I'll get her up. I'm sure, I'm sure Tom White can <laughs> can handle those returns. Yeah, yeah, give those right, a time. Right, right, right. No, we're Let, a great customer service team. Want to plug them while I'm on this shoe and go? But yeah, exactly. What about yeah. um? Let's talk a little bit about supply chains because I think that's probably one of the growing challenges that that plague our industry. Um, and it starts maybe a couple of years ago with uh, the import crisis we had with the ports. Um, when we had kind of the lockdown or the shutdown because of labor issues. Um, and then as we've got more e-commerce growing, I mean, agility in the supply chain is is not just a buzzword. It's a must today, right? I mean, it's almost like you have to make sure that, that you know, you have the right warehouse in the right place. And then you have to make sure that the trucking company you use actually has the workforce, like there's all these moving parts. So maybe you can describe some of the challenges that you see and the, that you guys have to deal with in the supply chains. Cause I think people misunderestimate how difficult it is today. And even, even with regards to prices are fluctuating both import, uh, sh you know, shipping. I mean, I just saw right. where FedEx and UPS, um, kind of, uh, you know, endpoint in, in where you're sending it to the customer, they're, they're shipping it back uh, if, if it didn't fit or they didn't like it. It's almost going up like 5% a year now on those costs. So tell us a little bit about what you see and some of the challenges and how you work through those things. Well, to be honest with you, Andy, I'm really closely involved in supply chain, but what, yep. I, what I've heard, heard, heard in, the, um, in the business is that <laughs> a lot of uh, issues are with the ports, uh, with the uh, China duty, um, the oil aware of uh, the additional 10% and who knows what's going to happen March 1st, but there has been a congestion at the ports right. in regards to moving um, containers. Uh, we've had a few, uh, I don't know if anyone else has um, been seeing this, but I've we've had some containers rolled. Um, right. We've been using uh, a lot of companies are returning to freight as well, which is 
really costly, as you're aware. Yep. Um, footwear is quite voluminous, um, not a dense commodity in any way. So if you are shipping it there, you're, you're paying a premium. Right. Um, so that's basically the challenges we yeah. see. And, and as a UK-based company, we are dealing with uh, with the Brexit situation right oh, now. Yeah. So we're not sure where that where that's going to go. But to mitigate that, we had we are opening up a um, a DC in Europe as well. So that's one of the other supply chain um, issues we're dealing with as well. But you you also uh, you have to up. you also have to file all the paperwork with the U.S. government when when you know you. You ship things up to Canada or ship them, or you know, they come in. Yeah, all without that kind of foreign, stuff. yeah, without foreign trade zone, we um, ship the goods in bonds. So, with with the ability with the foreign trade zone, you can ship your goods in bonds, mm -hmm. which means you're not declaring U.S. customs. You're shipping them from the United States directly into Canada, mm -hmm. and then we distribute to our customers in Canada. We have a 3PL we utilize up in uh, Mississauga, uh, outside of Toronto, and they distribute to our our wholesale customers up in Canada. So we do not pay any U.S. duty uh, when we ship to Canada, mm. which is a good thing. But so, we, do pay, uh, we do pay the Canadian duty, which um, is an average of 18% on footwear. Right. But the thing about Canadian, the Canadian tariff is not as in-depth as the U.S. tariff, as we're all aware. It's a lot easier to classify a shoe in Canada than it is in the United States. So Kevin, I, I I know too. You've been to a lot of our events. I feel like you're a you're a regular at, at a lot of them. I'm just kind of curious. Which what would you say is the event you most look forward to to each year? It's the FTDC by far. I, I really enjoy that event um, because it's a great great to meet and see colleagues within the industry and to bounce things off. And as as you see them when you have conversations in the hallway, or you are you meeting you know the different um, suppliers in the hallways. Um, that footwear review, the shoe review with, with the National Import Space Specialist is great. I enjoy that part of the that meeting. Um, also, the logistics piece um, and hear the, the different parts of the industry and then speak about what's trending in the industries as well, what complications or problems there are, or ways to mitigate those problems, and, and also the Jeopardy. Gotta love the Jeopardy. Oh, that was a new Jeopardy. thing, and, and that was actually <laughs> Kevin had a lot to do with that, that right? Idea, that was. Yeah. A very program, creative his idea. thing we did this year. That That's right. It was, was. It was. We had uh, several companies lined up and competed in a uh, Jeopardy style game where we uh, was with the tariff code. As you know, Kevin has been talking about all the challenges with working with designers. We actually went through through the harmonized tariff schedule and pulled out different issues, different you know what would normally be very um, tedious, boring things and we turned it into a game and yeah. so that was something that i think a lot of people had fun this year uh kevin actually participated he was one of the the contestants yep. yeah so mm -hmm. uh yeah so and how, how was it how was well it? but yeah it was, it was <laughs> <laughs> did better than we would have done so. but we've yeah. had, we've well, had the congressional i enjoy the congressional updates as well you know thomas when you speak and matt and no, yeah again uh, great a lot out of that conference that's a that's a really good conference yeah that's probably the only one i really go to to be honest with you what about the year. let's talk a little bit about because you you said you know the classification section the sample review that we do there seems to be a continual problem with classifying athleisure what is athletic what is you know casual what is you know normal shoes whatever I mean Clark's I've seen you know we walk around um, platform and we go to Fanny and we we look at your shoes from and over the past five years you know you guys have always kept up with the trends and set trends yourselves but you guys also have a lot of shoes that are that are more comfort focused than ever before do you have a lot of problems classifying kind of athletic versus you know the basic normal shoes and then within that maybe you can explain what the challenge is that that the industry is facing we're constantly trying to help people understand this issue and maybe you from your perspective having to do it can explain it a little bit better than we can well, the issue right now is whether what what is considered athletic versus non-athletic. As as we heard in the past, um, you know, Chuck Taylor at one time was a an athletic shoe. That's what everyone played basketball in in the '60s and '70s. I don't even know if the '80s, maybe. But Chuck Taylors were considered an athletic basketball shoe. Well, nobody wears Chuck Taylors anymore. You no, know, athletic shoes have come a long way. Um, the brands that produce athletic running shoes, they're they're more advanced. They're they they fit to the they form to the foot more. They're 
they're more flexible. Um, they're, they're meant for running. They're meant for right. the runner. They have support. Uh, they don't impact uh, the knees as much as they absorb impact more. Um, with our shoes, um, we're more athleisure. Our shoes, you know, they're they're to wear out and about. They're not meant to wear. They're a fashion shoe. You're not going outside running a marathon in our shoes. You're you're just wearing them to to look good. You from work to work to outside, work to the, to the night out. Um, so that's what we struggle with is determining whether or not they would qualify as athletic because the difference in duty, specifically in the in the textile upper category, you, your duty rates could be 20 percent uh, versus 9 percent in our in our footwear. So we struggle with. Um, what is determined to be athletic versus non-athletic, and um, there seems to be an inconsistency right now with with CBP of what is and what is not, and that, that's the struggle a lot of importers are dealing with currently. Yeah, it's it is a struggle, and you know we're trying to figure out a way to navigate through it. Last question before we go to fashion footwear focus with Jasmine is: Is the shutdown impacted you at all? I know the National Import Specialist is is furloughed some of the customs things are furloughed but goods are coming in we've had a challenge with the h with the harmonized tariff schedule being altered adding some lines and infant and kids footwear while not publishing what those lines are because now they're furloughed the itc is furloughed so there's some some squirrely things going on but for all intents and purposes how's the shutdown impacted your import Activity. It has an impact uh, impact us in any way. Um, to be honest with you, Matt, actually with the foreign trade zone, um, our goods go basically in bond from the port to our foreign trade zone, and then we file a weekly entry. So we're not impacted that that badly by the shutdown. To be honest with you. All right. Well, that's good. We'll keep that in mind, yeah. and mm. maybe Mr. Trump will keep that in mind as well. So we'll never see. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to see. <laughs> What is fashionable, though? How do you like that segue? <laughs> I don't yeah, know what that was very hard. It was <laughs> that was a rough segue. That was, no, that was, that was, let's try that again. I would with, not uh, be <laughs> the Waltham local Waltham News would not allow me to be on their broadcast. So, well, that's okay. I'll, I'll take it from please there. Do. Thanks, please take it. <laughs> um, so, I thought it would be a good time to kind of highlight the trends that I feel like Clark's has been incorporating. So, of course, like partnering with influencers and celebrities have been like a, a thing that everybody is doing in every industry um and i'm always surprised by the um the collaborations that clark's does one is um that i seen recently at um the end of last year was the collaboration with um mickey mouse's 90th anniversary which i thought was a great collaboration also two collaborations that were kind of unexpected but i loved were um the collaboration with Drake, um, they had a, a shoe where he kind of put a little bit of his spin on the Wallabies. And um, the Wu-Tang Clan d- did a um, three colorways um, of the Wallabies as well. And I felt like that was like, wait, what? Like you wouldn't think those two brands would match, especially because the Wu-Tang Clan is coming out of the 90s where the fashion was like definitely just straight New York street fashion so um, to partner with Clark's is definitely um, unexpected but I loved it so Kevin was behind all that he reached out to, he reached out <laughs> to yeah. Method Man <laughs> he reached out Man the rapper <laughs> was behind that <laughs> <laughs> that is so fashionable I didn't even know about that collaboration yeah yeah they do some yeah, great yeah Drake she's right Drake was one um, with his owl stores and, um, can I say the owl stores I'm in trouble um, also <laughs> You can end up that up. Also, um, yeah. Do, you yeah. Get, do, they, come, do yeah. they come by the office and check things out, or this is all done? Are they forced to take the security thing? training? Right. Did you force yeah, Mickey Mouse? Yeah, they get locked in the up? room with the uh, with that with that training. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did Method Man pass? That's all I want to know. <laughs> He did, M-E-T, he did. H-O-D, man. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, that was great. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today and taking a bit of your time. That was my to, pleasure. To thank describe. Because I think the, part of what the show is all about is helping people understand what colleagues do. You know, you may pass yeah. Kevin by and think, Kevin's a fun guy. But you may not realize that he has four jobs. Uh-huh. Five four, jobs. I think he added a fifth. Did, and he's on the video. He's a bus kid. Listen, hey, brother, you if you're not getting paid the four salaries and you're getting paid the one, don't keep <laughs> adding jobs. That's my tip to you, Kevin. Take it easy, man. Take it easy. Thank you. 
<laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> but folks, this is really trying to connect the industry and, and help connect dots and uh, help you understand a little bit more about what's happening in our industry. And, and uh, Kevin, thank you so much for coming on and giving us some tips and insights about, you know, not just what you do on a day to day basis, but what how you're trying to figure out trade compliance and security issues and all those other things. And you're doing a great job for Clark's and we appreciate all the support that you always give us. Uh, when we come to you and ask you for uh, for insights and help and support. Um, and folks, uh, this is uh, Shoe and Show. You can find us on shoeandshow.com to see our full catalog of uh, episodes. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, drop us a line if you have a, a topic you'd like us to talk about. If you have questions about the industry and want us to cover something really interesting, um, we'll do deep dives. We'll find the right person. Or if you have someone in mind that you would like us to come on an interview, we're happy to do that too. Um, ultimately, this is your podcast. This is your industry. And we want to make sure that we give you content that matches what you want. Um, so with that, for for Jasmine, for Thomas, for Matt, um, for Andy, and for Kevin Bruning, thank you again. Uh, Shuin is out. Shuin has been brought to you by the FDRA the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion, helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. For information about FDRA, visit FDRA.org.